Uh, Akilimo is uh, developed actually with having in mind uh, making agronomy being able to work at a scale, delivering agronomy uh, advices, right? And it is, I mean, historically it came from two words, Akili and Kilimo, that is smart agriculture in Swahili. And I'm representing here actually a team. Uh, Peter Peppers is the, the project lead, Akilimo devel is developed under the Akai project. Uh, the African Cassava Agronomy Project under IIT, and Peter was uh, coordinating that project. I myself am MacLeod, and all this <laughs> army is behind Akilimo. So I will just give you some. Um, I will try to 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 be comprehensive in the whole in in, in all the components of Akilimo. Uh, therefore, you will be able to see where you can plug in uh, your project, right? So uh, th there are different components in Akilimo. The data management system is uh, the most important one, the basic where enable that enables all the rest that is uh, the other four modules coming behind. And we do have a modular data analytics um, that we put together. Um, there is a versatile advisory tools, different types that I will touch upon as well. We do have a training and support materials that we work that we deliver for our partners as well. We do not directly work with farmers. We do have uh, partners that work on a grassroots level with farmers. So it is through our partners that we reach our farmers. And it is from through our partners as well, we get the feedback back from, from the, the farmers and for which we do have the use and, and uptake monitoring. So on, on some of these topics, it will be really a high level, a high level uh, presentation because Time will not be enough, for instance, if I go in detail with every modular analytics uh, thing. So on the data management, Akilimo so far is working on Sandman. We call it the smart agronomic data management, the Sandman. So we do have uh, digital, we, we use digital forms. It is ODK based. Uh, we do have a scripts and unique identifiers. Originally, we used to work with barcodes which if you are familiar with QR code, it is similar with QR code, although we never used QR code. Uh, I just put it here on, on the slides to for you to relate to if that is what you know. But recently it is already modified, so it can work without barcodes. And what it does is every entity on the field, be it a plant, be it a plot, be it a trial, be it a soil sample, uh, our household, our extension agents, all of them do have an identifier where a barcode uh, is linked to linked to the entity itself. But recently, as I said, we don't need barcode anymore. We could create um, a unique identifier when an entity is registered in the system and still the digital forms work. In a standardized way, our data comes uh, with the standardized form and um, submitted to a central. Recently, we I think the last three years we used the ONA server, and previously it was the ODK aggregate we were using. And we work with plus 200 extension agents um, in, uh, in, in Tanzania and, and Nigeria. Originally, Akilimo was developed for cassava for Nigeria and, and Tanzania. And it is working, it is providing advice actually on five uh, use cases, including we give fertilizer, uh, site specific fertilizer recommendation. Uh, we give an advice on best planting and harvesting dates. Uh, we give advice on maize and cassava intercropping or maize and sweet potato intercropping, um, and on best planting practices. Uh, that is also uh, the other use case that we give we give recommendation for. Um, so as as you see, it, there is a, a sound uh, system behind it that defines that 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 just secures the referential integrity of all the entities. So as as you are also familiar with the ODK with the ODK forums. It is on a specific entity or on a, for a specific purpose, you just have one single forum, but at the end of the day, the different forums are linked together. And that link, that referential integrity in that link is secured in the system of in the system of Sandman. 
So while actually Akai was working on Sandman, Meda and her team were working on agrofilms. And the agrofilms, we took the angle of uh, uh, providing a system, working with several um, extension agents and getting the data on a standardized form into a central system and then link it and then develop on top of that different dashboards, analytics system and so on. Meta's team was focused in an angle where the, the, the data that is being collected will be, when we say standardized, in, in it is linked to the, the semantics are right behind it. The, 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 um, oh, what is what is the name? Now you see my head is fixed on typology. It is not typology. <laughs> Meta. Ontology. So it, ontology. You see something. <laughs> or controlled vocabulary. Head. Some control. Yeah, you just pick the word and fix it there. So the ontologies are also correctly uh, linked with different libraries. So they have done a very wonderful job on that one. And we saw a value in bringing these two systems together, where you will have a system that collects data on a standardized manner and gets it into a central system. You can create your, your digital forms in a standardized manner as well. As well. And, and the ontology is at the end of the day, worked out, figured out, things are standardized in a real sense. So for that reason, now with an EIA, we are working uh, with the data scribe that just takes all the learnings of the two groups together. That is very soon it will be, it will be released, uh, it will be functional. And I think um, if you are interested, you could also look at that, that dimension. So one other, one additional thing maybe on the data management I can add is, uh, within Akilimo, we do have a system where we provide a dashboard for field coordinators and, and our partners uh, to monitor a timely execution of field activities. So we call it a validation trial monitoring dashboard, where by extension agent and by household or whatever structure that you have in the way you monitor your field activity, that you will be able to say if uh, X, Y, Z activities uh, from this and that area, are, is it, are they done on a correct time? Are they even done? And if they are done, are they done in the correct time? If they are not done, which ones are not done? Therefore, you could be able to send out a reminder for, for it to be done. And this thing, you can look at it in different ways. You can also adapt it in a way that if you want to know how much data is flowing into your system, that can also be just added as as um, as additional uh, functionality in it, uh, in 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 the parts in the tabs that you you don't see, we also follow for every extension agent. Um, they earn pointers based on the activity that is done and the time of the activity that is done. And at the end of the day, the sum of the pointers that they earn will translate into a certain a certain compensation. So that was also possible to monitor from this one. So. For the data management, if you are interested to know more, we need to take it in, in another detail, detail uh, discussion. But this is in really on a high level, this is what we have. So this is probably an important slide as well. In Akilimo, what is a data need? If one wants to use uh, Akilimo, uh, we require a geospatial data for your, for your area. That includes, it can be soil properties, it is weather. At this point, we are using this one, but I just included the list uh, for you to relate to. Again, if you have digital elevation model to be included, soil moisture in the DVI, different satellite images, whatever. All those things on your area need to come together. But at this point, it is the soil properties and the weather data. We sourced it from, from CHIRPS, from NASA, from ISDA, from ISRIC. Uh, these are the data that are we are using at this point in Akilimo. On the response to nutrient data, if you are focusing into fertilizer recommendations, site specific fertilizer recommendation, we need to have response uh, data to nutrients. Um, it can be trials conducted in the target area. Uh, preferably, that will be it. Uh, trials that you know of the quality that that are done with with a different level of nutrient input and yield response. Uh, it could be from partners, 
we did this kind of job in your area. But if in the absence of any uh, response to nutrient data in your area, probably the, the next best thing to do is to go and see uh, in another similar areas if there are the kind of learnings, at least as 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 a version one kind of advisory, you could base your your analysis on, right? So you can take that one, and we can start from that version one. We will develop uh, a certain a certain recommendation on the next season when you go on the validation from from the data that will come in from the validation. These recommendations could be refined. And in the absence of that as well, we could go into pedotransfer function kind of thing in literature review, because from your area, you will always have a geospatial data. And if there is a certain kind of relationship to yield response and this geospatial data, if there are pedotransfer functions in literature. If some people did something, we can also look there, find the information and, and, and use that. Um, and additional data that we need to make it really site specific will be what kind of fertilizers are available in your area of interest? And of course, with their NPK, NPK content together. <laughs> um, and the price, not only for the fertilizers, but for the, the, the crop the crop price. Um, this one we can we can um, depending on how you're going to deliver your 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 advisory, if it is going to be um, very flexible or um, allowing user to define their and then their prices. That is OK, but there are situations where one, the system doesn't allow, for instance, if it is an IVR, uh, there is no there is no real computation, real time computation behind it. It is already pre calculated advice that you are giving. And for those ones, we require a default value, a more realistic default value. And that's why we need then the fertilizer and crop prices in your area. At this point, we just changed uh, our way of working in Achillemon. We start developing a database for this fertilizer and crop prices. Therefore, this uh, database could be updated by the partners in, 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 in intervals, whenever there is a serious price change, they will adapt, they will uh, change it, they submit um, data on those one for, for our database and our analytics are sourcing it from the database. Um, and if there is any other additional farming cost, if you want to consider a transport cost, a seed cost, uh, land preparation cost, all those things need to be then provided and the investment capacity of your, your farmers. Uh, it is the same logic as the fert fertilizer and crop prices. Um, the risk attitude. Uh, some people, if they can afford to, 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 to take some risk, you will make your analytics. Uh, you will even provide them when the response is large enough, but the risk with it not having that, that response is also uh, more than not not being able to afford any risk, right? So the kind of recommendation you give also can be uh, can be uh, tuned with that with with risk attitude. Uh, the planting and harvest dates, the preferred ones, you can optimize it. Once you take their preferred one, you can optimize it in that in that window, in close to in in weeks around their preferred planting and harvest dates, you can uh, recommend based on historical weather data that we can do. A farm area, we need to have, of course, the GPS and some local soil fertility indicator. At this point, we are using what are the farmers current yield? What are they getting now? Any investment that increases yield from their current yield should be profitable. Therefore, we can advise. If it is not profitable, we will just uh, let them to uh, to continue to what they have been doing. So these are the data needs for, for Achillemo. Uh, on the analytics, I will just briefly go over it. Uh, if you want the detail, that needs to be another thing, but we use uh, satellite-based weather data, digital soil maps, we apply machine learning, we apply crop models, we do have price optimization. So the combination of all this gives uh, a power to Achillemo to give agronomy uh, advice as at, at a scale. So I want to bring you to, to, to the blueprint. Now you have already, uh, uh, by the way, if you have questions, if you have comment, whatever, you are 
very much welcome to interrupt any time. OK, uh, I cannot see if you raise your hand. You just you just call me and come in between. So this is the blueprint, maybe because it is very, very thingy, very sm uh, tiny. I will I will zoom in to, for you to show you uh, the blueprint for site specific fertilizer recommendation. And in general, what you see is on the on the left side is when you have a pre-calculated uh, advisory where you only need to have a lookup key and then pick that pre-calculated advice and deliver. And on the right side is when you don't have that pre-calculated value, but you're going to do it. So now I will I will probably zoom in and Yeah, if I do it like this, so if you look at it on the uh, when you have a pre-calculated uh, recommendation already, you take the GPS. If, uh, if if there is a GPS capability, it won't work with IVR, but it will. It might work for uh, not for probably. Uh, I think chatbot can do that. I'm not sure. Um, but if it is if it is a highly aggregated fertilizer recommendation, you are giving you it with uh, as a mobile application, you can do that. So if you do have a GPS capability, you go by the GPS capability. Uh, this determine HSC, it is uh, a bit uh, encrypted, but it is just saying that your location name. It can be on a village level, on a, a bit bigger, I don't know, <laughs> district level, whatever, right? And then you will just check if there is a recommendation available. If yes, you you will you will you will provide it. So this one is rather straightforward. It can be GPS level. It can be a uh, region or or some some local government area or some farmer association or whatever. In that way, you can code it and with with the lookup key it works. <clears throat> but what is more interesting is when you don't have it. When you don't have it, so we are we are so sourcing our weather data, our soil data, our crop parameters. Uh, the crop parameters we are using it for within the, the crop models. Uh, we currently are using Quaftus, Lintel, and, and this are the output. These are the three crop models we are using. There are more other other uh, crop models out there, but at this point they are not part of Akilim. So we will get this data based on the GPS coordinates that we create for uh, your area of interest. Right. If it is if it is Zimbabwe and you select it is the western and southern area, and you will define at what resolution do you want to? Is it are you okay with five by five kilometer? Are you okay by uh, twenty five by twenty five kilometer getting one recommendation, or you want to do it one kilometer by one kilometer? Based on your preference, you will generate that regular grid system. So you will have so many hundreds or thousands of data pointers, each point represented by the center of the coordinate, right? So we collect our data, we collect our our uh, crop parameters, and then we will we will put them some some of them uh, because sometimes it takes it takes it is just too much and it is so many unnecessary data will be lumped together, but there is a processing that goes that groups this data in a way that the analytics will will take it in a most efficient way. So we do have the spatial and the soil weather uh, the spatial soil and weather database, um, and and um, the regions and the default values, all those things that I, I said we need data for Akilimo, they all will go into their, their respective um, databases. So what we do next is, of course, the, the crop parameters uh, will, be, will be prepared, and these crop parameters will get into DSAT, will get into Lintool, and at the end later, they will also get into Quefts that we will use. And the the Sandman, the agronomy database, that is where I told you we need response to nutrient data from the field. When it comes there, we will extract and it goes, it goes through some curation and pre-processing step. 
uh, like any data analytics, right? What we do within, within Achillemo is we feed linear mixed uh, effects model to extract the blobs. Therefore, we will be able to go on further only with the structured variability, uh, which means that the response due to the, the, the treatment, the response due to the location, the response due to the year difference, these, these parameters are extracted. And the, we call them blobs. Uh, that's the output of the linear fixed, uh, the, uh, mixed effects model. So from here on, it is the blobs. It's only the structured variability dropping as much as possible the residual variance that we cannot explain from where it comes. Therefore, we cannot relate it to a location or to a treatment. Those ones are filtered out and the structured ones will get into, will, will get into quests. So here, what do we have with Lean to Learn DSAT? We are uh, generating using the input from our, our spatial soil data. Our crop parameters are giving us the water, lim water limited yield or the potential of the crop on that specific location, right? Um, and this, the water limited yield goes into the, its own database. And from there on, with the blobs that we get from here, it gets into the machine learning system. In the machine learning system, we use uh, random forest uh, analytics there. What we are trying to do is relate the soil data and the other geospatial data and the farmer's current yield class, not a specific, not the absolute uh, thing, but in, in class is at a low, a low, uh, 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 the infertile soil, medium fertile or high fertile, it is that kind of class. What response, what kind of yield farmers are getting uh, will, will tell us is it highly responsive or not. That is the idea. So combining the geospatial data and this, uh, the local soil fertility indicator, we call it, we will do the machine learning and we will be able to uh, define at that point what is actually the fertility level, what is the indigenous nutrient supply that is available in the soil in that area. And within that five by five kilometer, in average, what is the indigenous nutrient, sup uh, nutrient supply? And that will be combined with the water limited, with water limited yield, which is like the yield ceiling at this point, and we come into Quefta and we will pre we will predict what is the current yield that they are getting right. So we do have what in on the farmers field from from the machine learning we already predicted the soil fertility level and we know what maximum the yield ceiling is. Therefore, we two together we can define the the current yield. And here comes so many things. This big one here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, rank predicted predict target, target yield or optimization algorithms. Here is most of the things. Until now, we are all doing preparation and all what we have done comes boils down at the end here. And here in between, you see that I, there is there is a part I jumped. I already I only to show you the left and the right wing of the blueprint. In the middle, what is there is the user input that we require. And it is like um, the harvest dates, the, the current yield that they are getting at that place, the fertilizer types, the prices, the crop prices, the budget they have, uh, the, 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 risk the, the risk attitude that they have. All of these things needs to come to here. So there is an optimizer that takes into given these fertilizer types being available, given with that price, given the crop will be sold at, at, for X amount of money, uh, given it is planted on this time to be harvested on that time, given the, the, the yield ceiling is that and the soil fertility is that and the investment capacity is that much and the risk attitude is that much, what is a profitable fertilizer recommendation here? So it's not about the target yield. It's not about yield increase. It is about, is it profitable? And, and the, well, once the profitable fertilizer input is defined, then we can tell you how much target yield you can, you can expect, how much yield increase you can expect. So this is in short, the, 
the blueprint or the general team for for Akilimo. Uh, each one of it has depths in it, but uh, for now it is just understanding of the general thing that is required, right? So the next thing that is uh, the other component is the advisory tools. How do we, okay, we do have our recommendation and how do we deliver it? And we do have an app that you can, you can go to uh, Google App Store and you can, you can download and test it. It is working at this point for Nigeria and Tanzania. By the way, this thing is expanded now. Akilimo is expanded and we do have already for Ghana, uh, Burundi and Rwanda, it is, it is working. And we do have the API, which Sami will show you uh, soon. Uh, we do have a chatbot uh, developing with Arifu, uh, an IVR with Viamo. We do have some dashboards uh, where we give paper-based maps and, and tables and, and look up yeah, materials and, and some general uh, agronomy practice advice as well. We do have printable guides and worksheets where people can calculate on a paper if their investment could be profitable. Um, we do have cartoon guides and, and, and the like. So the, the app looks like this. You can download and, and test it. This is the Arifu chatbot that we have. Uh, it works on SMS, WhatsApp and, and um, Telegram at this point. Uh, these are the kind of maps we give them. Uh, this is a state in Nigeria and the advisory comes then on uh, a local government area within a state. And they do have a lookup, a lookup table associated with, with uh, this as well. Uh, the printable maps, uh, which in, in six steps, we summarize what they have to do if they are to see the, the profit from the advice. And then it has the, the table, the worksheet that I told you to calculate if it is profitable for them. Uh, this is what is at the back end developed by Akilimo for Viamo 3 to 1 that uh, stepwise it just every time uh, divides, I mean, guides you through uh, a decision tree. Yeah? It is a decision tree that takes you to, to the advice at the end. Uh, we do have cartoons. Uh, that our our partners are using to train their 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 extension agents um, on on all on all the five use cases for Akilimo, and we are also following user analytics. So after that, the advisory goes out. We want to know how much is reached, how much they get insights, if they are continually using it if it really helps them to change practice, if they benefited, so the different levels, and what are actually the factors behind, you know, is that the extension support, being having extension support or not, or what kind of the event when we take into this, this advisory to the to, to users, uh, and we are using different mechanisms, different way systems to train them, does these things have an effect? And these all are gender segregated, so we can evaluate. There are several things we are looking looking at under user uptake. Um, yeah, it is the the perception, the behavior, and the, the and access to service. What defines these things actually? That is also uh, we have a dashboard. We have a data collection system for for that one. And on validation, maybe the last thing I can show you is last time already we already mentioned that. It, this one is actually doesn't have the, the latest, the last year validation data is not yet in here. But the, the other year's 5,000 farmers test, tested it and 75% in, recorded increase in, in yield and in profit. And there were about 2% that negative impact as we saw by 2% of users didn't realize the, the, the expected yield increase and, and, and profit, but 75 uh, more than 75 percent did uh, and we do have about at this point plus 200 uh, partners this some of them are here uh, that are working with us so yeah um, this thing is not visible completely but uh, this is what i have for the for the general for the general akilimo introduction 